My name is Jason Vanderbreek. Um, I'm the Elite's Director of Online Communications, and I am uh, so happy to be your host for today's webinar. Um, we are thrilled and honored to have here with us today two uh, true luminaries and innovators in their fields, uh, Mr. Ben Nelson, founder and CEO of Minerva, and Mr. Sandy Kleiman, president of Entertainment Media Ventures Incorporated and co-founder of EEI Creative Arts School of Film and Entertainment. Um, it, is, it is very seldom that a real capital B big idea comes along in the world of education. And uh, Ben and Sandy are both capital B big idea people. So uh, we're, it's great to have you both here. Um, ben Nelson is a graduate of the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania. He has served as president and CEO of Community Ventures, a network of locally branded portals for American communities. And from 2005 to 2010, he served as the CEO of Snapfish, one of the top e-commerce services in the world. Uh, Ben's also the founder and current chairman and CEO of the Minerva Project. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Minerva. Um, there was a, a, starting about six or seven years ago, there was a much discussed story on Minerva in the Atlantic uh, when Minerva was just starting out. And since then, they've been incredibly busy building Minerva schools at KGI, uh, the groundbreaking forum learning environment, and the Minerva Baccalaureate High School program. Uh, which all of which you'll hear more about later. Uh, Minerva has been called the future of education, has been compared favorably to top tier schools like Harvard and Stanford, uh, both in terms of quality education and in terms of how competitive it is. I think its acceptance rate is hovering around just under 1% or so. So uh, it's also been the topic of stories in the Wall Street Journal, The Guardian, and um, a few months ago, a, a column in the New York Times by uh, Frank Bruni. Um, Minerva Schools at KGI offers a four-year undergrad program, as well as a master's in science graduate program that are radically different from traditional colleges and uh, college and university programs. Uh, they focus on ac active participatory learning, imparting practical knowledge and problem solving skills and uh, nurturing critical wisdom for the sake of the world, which I believe is uh, Minerva's mission. So uh, perhaps most famously, students at Minerva schools at KGI are given the opportunity to truly embrace experiential learning as they live in seven different cities in seven different countries over the course of their four-year program, uh, which is an idea that sounds just impossibly exciting to me. And I'm sure uh, Ben will be able to tell us more about it later in the seminar. Um, also here with us, uh, Mr. Sandy Kleiman. Uh, Sandy holds an MBA from Harvard Business School, a Master of Science in Health Policy and Management from Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, and a Bachelor of Arts degree from Harvard College. Uh, throughout his career, Sandy has served as Corporate Executive Vice President and President of Worldwide Business Development of Universal Studios. He was part of the senior management team at CAA. Uh, if you're not in the biz, that's a creative artists agency for 12 years, where he was the founding head of corporate practice and a senior talent agent representing uh, people like Robert De Niro and Robert Redford, Kevin Costner, Danny DeVito, um, as well as many prominent film and television production companies. Uh, Sandy's the founder and president of Entertainment Media Ventures Incorporated, a consultancy that's active in media investment and strategic advisory work with a particular focus on disruptive technologies and entities currently impacting the boundaries of business, media, and entertainment. Um, Mr. Kleinman was also executive producer of uh, the live action, the groundbreaking uh, film, the 3D film, U2 3D, and he was the producer of The Aviator, directed by Martin Scorsese, which I'm sure you've seen, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, for which he was awarded both a BAFTA, which on this side of the pond, uh, we kind of call the uh, British Academy Award and the Golden Globe for Best Film. Uh, Sandy's also the co-founder of EEI Creative Arts School of Film and Entertainment, a new first-of-its-kind private middle and high school program offering a unique cutting-edge curriculum um, like, like Minerva, uh, focusing on instilling practical hands-on experience and skills uh, for the next generation of filmmakers and musicians. 
Uh, so Ben and Sandy, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. You know, I just have to say, firstly, it's daunting that there are a couple of hundred students on this event. And secondly, on, on, on the part of myself and the co-founder of uh, Elite Creative Arts School and, and the founder of Elite Educational Institute, J.P. Park, I, I want to just say we are in awe of Minerva. And when we originally conceived of the idea of bringing uh, something very new and something very important to young people who at an early age have the desire to be storytellers and you know, participants in, in this crazy industry of entertainment. Um, Elite was just the marvelous partner for me because of my high respect for what they were as an open school, an online school, and as an educational institution. But when the opportunity to partner with Minerva came along, it so changed our thinking and elevated our ability to serve the next generation of young people who, as they do with Minerva, look for what is 21st century education, look for something that is highly relevant to their life, look to what I hope everyone looks for when they look for a career. You should look for it in the career of education. It is a sense of lifelong adventure, engagement, and excitement every day of your life. Wow, very well said. That's tremendous. I very, very much appreciate that, Sandy. And we've been huge fans of, of the work that you guys have been doing. And it, we're so excited to be cooperating with you and really furthering what high school education could be all about. So we're, we're really, really excited by that. All right, so now, uh, you know, Jason, to sort of be Julie, your cruise director on the love boat here, <laughs> let, 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 by the way, the, 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 the hundreds of students here are too young to actually know that reference unless they're watching Tubi or something like that, is what I would say is, um, can you just run the Minerva video briefly? And then, and then I think Ben can start to talk about that journey. And then we can talk about what really is the subject matter here for young people, which is, Hey, I got a big life ahead of me. Can I learn something, you know, from this, you know, this this talk and and take it back to my friends, my school, my parents, and let's really think about what education is all about. But maybe just run the video because I don't think it ran uh, with sound before. Ah, got it. Here we go. Did you know that you forget about 90% of what you're taught in a traditional class after only three days? Imagine how much more you could be getting from your education if we learned it differently. Over the last decade, Minerva has been refining an approach that's focused on more engaging teaching and learning. We emphasize specific skills, the same ones experts agree are the most important, so that you're not stuck memorizing content, regurgitating it, and then forgetting it later. Learning with Minerva is different in three key ways. It's fully active and discussion-based. This means instead of being lectured, you're interacting with your classmates and your teachers, not sitting passively. It's also designed to be built over time and across subjects. So what you're learning one day will be referenced again in another context the next day, helping you draw connections and solve new problems more creatively. And it includes teacher feedback on your participation. So it's not just about a grade on a test. It's about guidance based on actual evidence coming directly from your classes. That includes the interesting point you made or the question that you asked during the group discussion. So what does this mean for you? The Minerva approach will make you a more engaged student who thinks in a more expansive and interesting way. And in a way that the world, the one outside of the classroom, really needs. Okay, so so before Ben gets into like real stuff, I'm going to like show you the difference between a hardcore academic and an ex-talent agent. All right, so that nice woman you saw who was presenting there for all the students on this this little gathering. So I'm sure I'm going to mispronounce her name as Miss Homayafor. But the bottom line here is she's a director of admissions at Minerva. 
So if I were getting off this thing as a university, what I would be doing is I would be Googling like her favorite cookies. I would, and I would start to find a way to butter her up because the chances of getting into Minerva make getting into Harvard look like a, you know, a landslide. She may be, she may be the, the, the person you need to win over to get to the next level. Here's, here's the bad news, Sandy. <laughs> bad news is there, the, the way to get into Minerva is just based on a formula that, that Nagina or nobody else in, in, uh, in the university uh, uh, controls. So it's, it's, a, it's a process that finds the best talent in the world from all over the world. And it gives those students that opportunity. So I'm sure Nagin would very much like you to send her cookies, but uh, it's, it's not going to get you in. <laughs> All right. By the way, that may work at Minerva. In the world I live in, the cookies yeah. work. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a that's a great uh, uh, a great point. I mean, you were, we're already bringing in um, the, the selectivity of uh, Minerva and, and so on. For people joining us uh, today who might not be familiar with uh, Minerva, uh, Ben, can you tell us a little bit about um, you know, what are the, the major challenges that students and college graduates are facing right now? And, and what is, what's Minerva doing to, to meet those challenges? Yeah, I absolutely be happy to do it. I, I think it's, it's first and foremost important to dispel some myths about college. Um, because th there are a few myths that uh, not only do high school students have, but worse parents have who've been through college. Um, and it's actually a fascinating uh, phenomenon because when we think about our own experience going to university, sometimes we forget what the lessons of that experience was when we think about sending our own children to university, right? And so as you mentioned in, in the very uh, generous introduction that you made, I went to the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania as an undergraduate. And I was a Joseph Wharton scholar. I was in the honors program of the Wharton School. And among the 40 uh, Joseph Wharton scholars, when I graduated and during a booming economy uh, many years ago, um, and with all of the, uh, uh, the, the value of, of the Wharton name and the degree and the infrastructure for recruiting, three of the 40 Joseph Wharton scholars graduated without a single job offer. Um, had no idea what they would uh, they what they could do at the uh, at the end of their and, their and that was among the honor students in the most selective program in an Ivy League university, <laughs> right? And so there is this myth that the world is one where you get a stamp on your forehead and then you can relax, right? And then you know everything is taken care of for you. It just happens. Well. Sorry to tell you, that's not how the real world works. Your parents know this, right? Any parent that's listening to this know this. They all know that the stamp isn't the thing that is going to make it for you. And worse, that when you think about your day-to-day, -day, when you think about what you do for a job, for your career, it doesn't actually tie to what the vast majority of people studied in the vast majority of universities. And so there's a, there's a myth that needs to first be suspended. But the good news is because the lived reality of every parent in the world is not in that myth. The lived reality is that, yeah, you know, when I think about what I do day to day, it isn't necessarily what I learned as an undergraduate. And when I think about my career, it's not just because I got a certain degree that you start to see why Minerva exists. Because we actually believe that education does matter. And that if you learn not to get a, an A on a test that then three days later you can forget about and move on from, but actually learn systematic thinking, learn tools that you can apply whether or not you're in a biology class, a psychology class, an economics class, or more importantly, whether you're working in the movie industry, in government, in business, as an academic, or even when you interact socially with other people, it's those skills that differentiate you. It's that ability to learn systematic thinking, which actually is your ticket to success. And that's what we've been able to demonstrate at Minerva, both in the experiences that we provide our students, but far more importantly, 
what they do after graduation and the success that they have enjoyed because of that education. Yes. Yes. Well, let, let me just add to what Ben is saying, but let me put another um, sort of uh, a, a sort of approach to it. And it also is what has brought Elite together with Minerva and what brings us to this webinar today. What Ben is saying is exactly right. Now, I have two sons, uh, 128, 125. One is at CAA. One is uh, the director of operations actually for Elite Creative Arts School. Both went through the Elite college preparation. And the difference between the, we won't name them, the other college preparation and elites is that elite taught you how to think. It didn't teach you how to take a test. It taught you how to think. You came out a better critical thinker. And I think that what Ben is talking about is exactly right. You want critical thinking makes education more engaging and that's what Minerva does. And that's what our goal is at elite. It makes it, uh, you know, valuable for life and work. It makes it, you know, with specific real-time feedback. But the other side of all three of those areas is having human skills. And I remember speaking with the director of admissions at the, the USC School of Cinematic Arts. And, and one day he sort of broke down and he said to me, he said, you know, the problem is we have students here who don't know how to talk to people. And he said, we're in a business and we're in a world, but we're really in a business. We're talking to people and thinking collaboratively and team effort is how you get great creative product, great stories, great stories made. It is an army on the move that needs to collaborate and make critical and creative decisions together. And you know, part of what we're doing at you know, Elite Creative Arts, which is why it matches so well with Minerva and our own philosophy is that when you are in Minerva and you're navigating different countries, you can't be in a city that you don't know anything about. And a lot of these students, as we do at, at, at Elite, we, we prize diversity, we prize you know, new voices, is that you have to have good human skills. And it is the intersection of critical thinking and the ability to operate with the skills and values that we value in terms of collaboration that I think really create the leaders of tomorrow. Absolutely. Yes. I couldn't say it better myself. And I think it, it, that's really so important to reinforce because in every step of life, the difference between success and failure, the difference between getting to the next stage, the difference between having impact in the world and not is can you solve problems that other people have difficulty solving? Can you articulate a solution, a collaboration, an idea that's novel and new and better? Because if somebody wants an answer, they can look up, they don't need a human being. Uh, we have computers for that, <laughs> right? Uh, we have the internet for that. And so the world that we're in is one that is all around how you can break problems down into their component parts, put them back together into new solutions, think through what those solutions would be like in the real world, and then be able to collaborate and communicate with other people in order to implement them. And that is what is so special, I think, about this collaboration, because that is, as Sandy said, what is in the bones of what Elite does, and it is how Minerva is constructed. It's the only higher education degree in the world that can guarantee that process for students as they go through their education, and indeed uh, winds up being recognized for that. You know, the interesting thing is that, you know, when when you think about Minerva and the academic side of elite Minerva, we look at a 19th century agrarian model where basically whether, you know, the, the, the students on this, you know, Zoom, um, you know, know this or not, you know, the academic year was built so that you could go back to the farm and work. <laughs> and, and, you know, then you have the sense that, yeah, it's good to memorize things. You know, when I was growing up, uh, we, we, had, we had no money. And we would go to the A&P and buy a different um, letter 
edition of an encyclopedia. And that was the encyclopedia I worked with my entire life. And if and and by the way, when it got out of date, you know, it didn't really help. And you know, memorizing stuff kind of mattered and things kind of moved slowly. And in the entertainment industry, if you went to film school, and you know, part of what we're doing, because our school is really gauged for the crazy 12-year-olds who think they want to be Steven Spielberg, and you can't shake them from it, or they want to you know, be, you know, Leo DiCaprio or Lady Gaga, whatever, you know, is, is that we're going to, you know, you can do this at a much younger age, but in the old days, if you went to film school, you spent a lot of time figuring out camera apertures, how to use, uh, you know, splice film, you might be locked up with white gloves handling film strips. Where we are today in academics is that it is all about lifelong learning and all the tools are available to you no matter who you are as long as you have an internet connection and we need to make sure everyone does and on the film side we're using our iPhones to make movies and we are using editing equipment you know editing software in the cloud and we instead of editing something together that is so difficult to change you can basically instantly a b test something and we're TikToking, we're Snapchatting, we're YouTubing. There's no difference between the creative forces of storytelling anywhere. It is about IP and then wrestling your own genius to tell the story in the form that is best for you to tell the story. So both the academic side and the creative side are fast moving trains. And what we're trying to do is to actually not fight that, but to put you on that train and show you how to navigate how to navigate the future without in any way creating obstacles to your ability to achieve. Yes. Ben, before jumping off that, before the webinar started, uh, you were talking to us about some of the, the outcomes uh, from Minerva yeah. graduates uh, and sort of the things that they went on to do. Uh, so I guess I have a kind of two-part question. First of all, could you tell us a little bit about those because sure. they're very impressive. And then also, I, I would you, uh, you know, would you chalk that up to the fact that you know Minerva is focusing on those things like critical thinking and practical skills that are probably lacking in a lot of students, a lot of other students. Yeah, absolutely. So just to give uh, people who are not familiar with Minerva uh, uh, or the, the university a, a sense. Um, so Minerva is the most selective and by far the most effective university in the world. Um, we have uh, uh, tens of thousands of applicants coming in every year from 190 different countries. Um, uh, and we select students, as I briefly mentioned before, um, not in competition with one another, but against an absolute standard. Um, we look for individuals of high potential, no matter where they come from, no matter what country, walk of life, et cetera. And we give them the opportunity to get a transformative educational experience. And so um, we do that through a unique approach to curriculum. We teach them these cognitive tools that enable them to solve these problems in, in interesting ways. We do it through an active uh, learning pedagogy that we developed ourselves called fully active learning. Uh, where the students are deeply engaged every single minute uh, of uh, their, their class. We do it through an experiential program where, uh, as, as Sandy mentioned, they live, they travel together and live in seven different countries during their four years. And they use the city as their campus uh, and transfer their knowledge, not just from subject to subject, as they study and major and concentrate in, in various fields, but also from culture to culture. And so when you look at even our very first graduating class, right, and we've now graduated a couple of classes of undergraduates and master's students, et cetera, but you look at the statistics and outcomes, um, I, 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 as far as I can tell, our, our, uh, our undergraduate class um, has the best placement of any university in history, right? So in our first class, we had just over 100 graduates, right? Very, very small classes uh, at Minerva, a lot of attention given to every student. But of those 100 and some students, we had about four that were interested in postgraduate programs at Harvard University, two in PhD programs, two in uh, um, other research programs. All four were accepted. 
Um, just to be clear, Harvard undergraduates applying for Harvard graduate programs don't have a thousand percent accept or a hundred percent acceptance rate. They have at best uh, in the low double digits. Um, uh, we have another student uh, who uh, in that same class who did a PhD uh, or is doing a PhD in neuropsychology at Princeton, another one doing a PhD in physics with a Nobel Prize winner at Berkeley, another one doing a master's in, in physics at Cambridge, who is now working at Amazon, five more that are pursuing uh, computer science PhDs, the top 25 programs all over the world. And again, that's out of a class of just under over 100 students, Incredible. right? We had half a dozen students that were interested in working in finance. Not a single one of them went to work for an investment bank. They work, went to work directly for hedge funds or venture capital firms, which are usually three to 10 years out of graduation. We had one student who actually was offered a partner position because she had been uh, a part-time associate with a venture capital firm for her last two years at school. And when she was about to take a job at Airbnb because they were hiring her as a manager, again, out of school, um, the VC firm made her a partner on the spot. Um, and I could go on and on. We have, you know, we have three graduates again from this hundred-person class who've co-founded who've co funded startups, uh, including the most highly funded startup in in Latin America uh, in biotech. Um, we have individuals working in tech companies and consulting and nonprofits, right? But the key is that when you connect all of their outcomes, they're directly attributed to what they learned. I'd love to say, hey, you know, all of these folks, they just saw that they graduated from Minerva and they automatically gave them these jobs. That's fantasy, right? You can't even say, hey, I, I graduated from Minerva. I graduated from the most selective university in the world. Give me a job. You have to earn it. And the way to earn it is to, that you interview better than the next person, that you're differentiated. The way not to earn it is to be the same as everybody else, yes. right? Yeah. And by the way, that's the underpinning of elite creative arts. So, you know, Mr. Park and I were talking about our love for the entertainment industry and the need to bring forward the next generation of storytellers and creative, you know, artists. And what we realized is, and we, I, I took a page out of the IMG academies, is that it used, they started as an after school program, a non academic program. And if you really wanted to be a major tennis player, that's what you did. But there are almost no programs. Like, now today, people choose IMG academies to blend the best of, of athletics and professional sports with high quality academics. We're, we understood that in and, and Los Angeles, a good example, you're sitting in the heart of Hollywood and all of the creative programs are after school programs. They're, they're geared towards um, you know, enrichment, but they, they are not really staffed with professionals. They don't use the tools, even though they sit in the middle of the Hollywood community. And if you're going to apply to USC, UCLA School of Theater, Film and Television, um, Tisch, AFI, any of the elite schools, and if you really want to, and again, putting aside academics and credentials, as Ben says, it's about what you can do. Nobody wants to, you know, when you sit down in a meeting, the last thing they want to hear is, I went to an Ivy League school. You know, it just, it doesn't, you know, it's, they might, you know, the, if you say that, you might be getting them a jelly donut. But the, and, and that, that might be the response, which is, I, by the way, just as an aside, in my first job as a secretary at a foreign distribution and, and production company, I was carrying a box down from where I was working to reception on my shoulder. And the, and the chairman of the company poked his head out of his office and said, go to Harvard for that, Sandy. <laughs> and uh, in any event, but the point of the what we created was to bring the sense of life experience and professionalism. So what Ben has done is he's created a sense of life experience in the real world as part of your academic background. Instead of living in a bubble, you're living in the real world while you learn. In our world, you're living in the real world of Hollywood while you academically learn. You will have internships. You will be working with professionals. Our advisory board includes Academy Award winners, Emmy winning writers, editors, casting directors, producers, 
of all distinctions, of all backgrounds, international. And the goal here, now that we are on a global platform for entertainment, Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, Disney Plus, Paramount Plus, all of them, is for us to create an environment that nurtures you as a young person and all of the things that make you a better person, a more grounded person academically, but also to give you the release that you need of that creative spirit bottled up in you, but with the guidance of professionals. That's wonderful. Yes. Um, we, we had a question come in um, about, uh, well, a couple, a few questions that are terrific. And by the way, I should mention, uh, there is a Q&A function. So if you are attending and you have questions, go ahead and, and pop your questions in the Q&A. We will uh, get to as, as many as we can. Um, but uh, one question that came in is, what is the relationship between Minerva and uh, Elite? And there, there's, we have a relationship both uh, between uh, Minerva and EEI Creative Arts and also Minerva and uh, Elite Open School. Um, ben, maybe this is a good time to talk about the uh, Minerva Baccalaureate. Yeah, absolutely. So um, ever since we started Minerva, we've gotten uh, repeated uh, questions about hey, you know, you, you fixed higher ed as if, you know, we just waved a magic wand and fixed the whole sector. There's still some work to do on, on, on reforming the rest of the sector. Um, but when are you going to come and, uh, and, and help change high school uh, education? And we were given an opportunity uh, this, uh, this past year to develop a brand new approach that brings a Minerva perspective of education to high schools. And um, that is the Minerva Baccalaureate. And the Minerva Baccalaureate has a number of really uh, uh, unique features uh, uh, in it. First and foremost, it takes the core subject matter, your math, history, English, science, and blends them together with cross-cutting learning objectives and adds a fifth track, which is how you then incorporate what you learn for your own personal development and growth. So as an example, Rather than just focusing in your math class on solving an equation and applying a formula, you may look at an equation and say, hmm, let me think about the constraints that are associated with this equation and figure out what numbers are extraneous that I can get rid of and get down to the core constraints so I can solve the problem. At the same time, when you're in a science class and you're thinking about chemical reactions, right? You can think about the constraints of the conditions in which you're performing an experiment, oxygen levels, temperature, et cetera, right, that affect how much uh, or what kind of reaction you're going to see. When you study history and you study about Napoleon invading Russia in 1812 and that not working out so well, you start thinking about the constraints of supply lines and of uh, preparation and being able to maintain territory with infrastructure and as well as having enough uh, uh, fighting troops to go in. And when you think about, uh, in, in English, for example, about writing a sonnet, you think about the constraints that are associated with effectively communicating what you're trying to do within the form of, of a sonnet, not to mention constraints in how they make you an effective collaborator, friend, um, or uh, have any kind of interpersonal activity. Now, why is that important? It's important because in the real world, you don't walk into a job. You don't go into a, even a university and somebody tells you, write a sonnet, right? Or solve this equation, right? Or tell me about why Napoleon failed to conquer Russia in 1812. None of those things will ever happen in your real life. Mm -hmm. But every day you are going to encounter problems. And if you don't have a deep understanding of the constraints, the environment in which you're trying to solve them, you won't be able to come up with that solution. So it's not that learning to solve equations or exercising your creativity by writing a sonnet isn't important. But what's far more important is to leverage those opportunities to develop metacognitive tools that you can use no matter what you encounter. And so the Minerva Baccalaureate 
focuses on the ability to do that. And it enables the school to then offer, because it opens up quite a lot of time during the day, it only takes about two hours a day, two periods a day in those core subjects that are engaging and exciting for the students. And it then lets the school fill the rest of the day with the types of activities, right, that enrich student life and apply what you learn in those tools to particular areas, right? Um, and so that combination is extraordinarily powerful. There's another feature of the Minerva Baccalaureate, which is that by the fourth year, students are actually ready for a year's worth of college classes. And you effectively get 32 credit hours uh, from Minerva University, regionally accredited credit hours from the most elite university in the world, right? That is far, far, far more valuable than an AP test or an IB test or any of those other teach the test modalities that schools are already moving away from and not accepting because they realize that when you get your four or five on an AP, it's not the same as actually taking bio 101 at that university. Um, and so what you get instead is an education that is useful, that is far more elite or prestigious um, uh, than the typical AP or IB tracks, and that help you with a significant leg up, no matter what you pursue moving forward. Yes. So, you know, just just to that, uh, you know, from the EC, from the, the elite creative arts point of view, the way we looked at it is it was as if elite and Minerva were siblings who were separated at birth. <laughs> because elite was always about critical thinking on the high school level. And Minerva was always about critical thinking on the college level. And this is the intersection where they come back together. But to Ben's point, you know, when I, you know, when I look at what you have to do, the dedication you have to do to actually have a life in the creative arts, remember there are jobs that are jobs. There are fewer and fewer of them, but there are jobs that are jobs. I mean, you go to work, you go nine to five, you come home, you have dinner, you watch some, you know, streaming, whatever, movies, TV, what, and you're done. And, you know, it's a life. And then there are, then there is a calling and where your life's work is a calling and entertainment is a calling. It is a lifestyle business. You don't say, hey, I'm going, you know, done with the day, going home, you know, stop over at McDonald's and be back tomorrow. You know, it's like it never ends because the creative part of it never ends. But when you think about it from an academic point of view, it means that you really have to be focused and thoughtful about how the academics move forward. So the notion of open schooling, which Elite has, has, has basically been a, a, a leader in, is where we are here. If you look at the forum system, which you know everyone has gone through the pandemic, and Ben may want to comment on this later, everyone's gone through the pandemic wrestling with Zoom and other platforms and having a very bad time with it, whereas the forum platform that, that, that Minerva developed basically is the highly effective, highly engaging, highly stimulating platform for education, where instead of looking around in front to the sides and back at your fellow classmates, the teacher, the instructor, you are fully focused on the forum platform, on your computer, and you can basically manage your life and your education in that 21st century way that is really emblematic of the most effective education. Now for the creative arts, that's critical because we can't compromise on academics and we can't compromise on creative engagement. So you're basically packing a really big day and you better have the tools and the focus to do it if you're going to be a well-educated, well-prepared person as a person, as well as a prepared professional, someone who is sharpening their creative skills, and that's the goal of the school. And to Ben's point, you know, when you're done with, you know, elite creative arts, you will have made product, you'll have made projects, creative work, whatever it is, film, television, audio, short form videos, thing, music, things that are emblematic of what's in you, and they can have a number of different 
impacts. One is um, you will have a portfolio to show the elite schools if you choose to go to the elite schools. Two, and I always do worry about this, people may just go into the industry and you're going to have the portfolio. And by the way, it's not that you have the portfolio. People may have already seen it. You're, you know, you go home and you realize that, you know, you know, Jimmy's father is actually a producer at, at, at Universal and he's seen what you've done and they want to talk to you. Much okay. like Amanda Gorman is on the cover of Time Magazine after being the poet laureate at President Biden's administ at, at President Biden's inauguration. It's the discovery of genius is a daily event today. And what we want to do is to make every minute of the day satisfying, engaging enriching, forward-looking, and making sure you get everything you need packed into that creative life, packed into that creative life. Wow. Why settle for anything less? I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's terrific. Yes. Um, uh, I have a couple questions. First of all, just to answer the question about the relationship between uh, elites and Minerva, uh, very, very clearly, um, if, if you are ready for this, this new transformative accelerated program for, for high school students, uh, Elite is now partnering with Minerva to offer the Minerva Baccalaureate High School program through our brand new program called Elite Campus, which is available at all of our Elite Prep Learning Resource Centers all over the world, including our, our 26 uh, LRCs here in the USA. Um, so we are now enrolling uh, ninth and 10th grade students into the Minerva Baccalaureate program at Elite Open School for the 2021-2022 academic year. Um, there are, there's lots more to learn about that. Uh, so to, to find out more, and I'll, I'll touch on this later before we close out, but uh, you can go to elitecampus.org and there's a lot of great information about the, the MBAC there. Um, yeah, but one, one thing I want to say about that is it is important to talk about it as partnering with Minerva. But the greatest joy I've ever had in my life is bringing together people who will change the world together. And JP Park and Stephen Park, who helps run Elite, and Ed Kim, who is Edward Kim, who runs curriculum, along with Ben's team, we don't look at it just as a partnership. We look at it as a lifelong collaboration. Because if, if Minerva was a static program, or if Elite was a static program, it would be counter to everything we're talking about. Exactly. We are moving forward every day. Wow, yes, very true. So let me ask the question that is probably on every attendee's mind right now. How, if I want to uh, go to uh, you know, Minerva schools at, at KGI, uh, how do I get in with a, with a less than 1% uh, acceptance rate? What's the, and, what's and no cookies and yeah, no cookies. Yeah. The cookies are not, are not the solution. So, so, you know, this is actually the, the, the interesting thing about Minerva, as I mentioned before, we're not in the business of, um, of uh, looking for a particular type. We're not in the business of excluding people based on uh, we have too many of a certain uh, person, right? We look at the individual when they apply. Now, there's good news for some, bad news for others. We don't look at SAT scores. Um, we don't, uh, uh, you can't write a pre-written essay that we will evaluate that, a, uh, uh, that a, a counselor can help you craft and you know, try to uh, uh, do that. We don't take cookies. Uh, we don't know who your parents are when you apply. But what we do is we create our own system to get to know the individual applicant. And really we look for two things. We look for students that are extraordinarily talented, right? And so it, without question, Minerva is a highly selective program and you have to do well in a high school environment, especially for those who are gonna be in the Minerva Baccalaureate program that gives you a major leg up uh, in, in, in the process. Um, but we also look for students who are passionate, who really want and have demonstrated that they expend their energy 
to produce, to make things occur in life. Yes. And, and that is really the intersection of what we look for in the entire admissions process of Minerva, which is, by the way, free. You don't have to pay an application fee. You can apply uh, at any time. If you happen to be a graduating senior now, you can still apply to Minerva for, uh, for consideration for next year. Uh, I think we accept applications through uh, a few more weeks, through mid-March. Um, and, and there are, uh, so you have a, a, a way of just showing us who you are and we evaluate you and whether or not it, it makes sense. We will also sometimes recommend other programs that may be inspired by Minerva that may be a better fit. Um, and so that, that process is, uh, is, is straightforward. Uh, and I encourage anybody to try, if you're interested in it, of course. Now, the, the key to, to uh, the real question is less about whether or not you can get in. The question is, can you thrive in this environment? And, and just so you understand, this is a very difficult environment. We're more academically rigorous than any university in the United States by far. Um, we uh, don't create a bubble campus environment. When you come to Minerva, you live in a residence hall with the other students and you have to cook for yourself. There's no cafeteria. There's no uh, uh, in, in-house gym. You live as an adult, one with staff that help you navigate, but we very quickly leave you as well because four months after you show up in San Francisco, you're moving to Taipei. And then the second year, you don't show up in San Francisco, you show up in Seoul. And then you go to Hyderabad. Right? And then the next year you go to Berlin and then to Buenos Aires and then to London and then back to San Francisco, <laughs> right? And so it, it is about that adaptability and the maturity to be able to handle that environment. So to me, that is actually the, the question that I ask the applicants, which is, are they ready for that type of experience? What the MBAC does is that it, then takes a broader swath of students and gets them prepared for that type of experience. Uh, and, 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 that, and, and not only is it, of course, preparing you for a Minerva education, it's preparing you for any education, much like our students will go to graduate schools at other universities, because we don't offer those types of PhD programs, right? The Minerva baccalaureate students will largely be going to other universities because they have gotten the metacognitive tools through the Minerva Baccalaureate process. And you know, Jason, to Ben's point, and this is critical for the elite creative arts school, is that you know, at Minerva at the university level, 25,000 applicants for 200 slots. And that's great, but it shouldn't be seen as some kind of special club, even though in having spent time with Ben and his students, it is a special club. But what the high school program does is it takes those, these are not just academic skills, these are life skills. And it starts the life skills earlier. And the reality is for most high school students, you should get the life skills in high school. And then for some Minerva will be right, but for some they will go to general academic institutions with a very different mindset than had they gone without a Minerva Baccalaureate. And from the creative arts point of view, it's clear because all these kids um, should be in our school because they want to go to a film, television, theater, creative arts, creative writing, a place of discipline at the university level where they can then take those skills to the next professional level. Or I hate to say it, they may just go to work. And, you know, and, and they may. And, 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 and again, it, you know, the earlier we, you know, the fun part about life is when you get serious young people who take education seriously and they're not looking at their watch and they're not feeling like they're wasting their day and they're not marking off time to get, a, a, you know, a, a name on a credential as opposed to life affirming credential is what, 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 what they're really doing is th P, you know, our young people are more mature today than they've ever been. And they are more serious because they are engaged in media that is global media. They are engaged in thinking that used to be isolated from young people and today is a very 
immersive part of their thinking. Part of what I, I think we do is to make sure that they don't get disengaged and disenchanted because ultimately the goal is to create a forward looking group, not just of leaders, but of people who will move everything forward for a better world. But you have to start young. And today, you know, we don't treat young people as children. We treat young people as adults who happen to be young. And what we're giving them, whether it's through creative storytelling or through the kinds of academics that Elite and Minerva will, will blend, is the tool set to have a great childhood, but to prepare yourself for the important work of being a rounded human being, a rounded partner in your community, a rounded contributor to your family with skill sets that are absolutely critical in a fast changing world to navigate those changes. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm conscious of the fact that we have uh, uh, only a few minutes left. Uh, and I thought there could be some broad categories of questions that I could quickly address. Um, as far as both Minerva University and as far as uh, uh, the, the high school uh, Minerva Baccalaureate program. So as far as the university goes, um, we have had students pursue medical careers, uh, uh, go to medical school, uh, uh, look at uh, uh, scientific research uh, positions, PhDs, etc. And so, yes, not only is it a, uh, a good outcome for students, but it's actually uh, one that gives them a, a major leg up. And that's true of all of our programs, whether it's computer science, social sciences, arts and humanities, business. Um, we are accredited, like uh, uh, Stanford or Caltech or, uh, or Berkeley are accredited, the same uh, uh, accreditation uh, uh, standards. Um, and we enable our students to pursue any of those types of, of offerings. Now, the Minerva Baccalaureate, again, is a high school program. Think of it as a more advanced and far more uh, effective program than an international baccalaureate or advanced placement. Um, that, it, which, which uh, uh, Elite is, is offering to students, it does not have the same kind of 1% uh, uh, acceptance uh, of philosophy as the university. It is, it is meant for, um, uh, for any student in Elite uh, that is interested in, uh, uh, in pursuing it. And, and I thought maybe uh, Jason and Sandy, you could talk a little bit about what the criteria are, what the process is of, of uh, coming on board to the Minerva Baccalaureate. Well, I'm going to let Jason do that. But before we do that, let me shamelessly, shamelessly promote the next generation of visual storytellers conference that Elite is hosting. And that is March 6th and 7th. It is going to be an online, it's going to have award-winning filmmakers. We are going to talk about everything from how to think about creating a story, to pitch a story, how to make your first short film, how to think about applying to elite and to universities, to the elite universities. We're going to have uh, Dean Terry Schwartz, um, who is uh, the former uh, dean of for 10 years at the UCLA School of Theater, Film, and Television, of which I'm on the board. And as a, as a benefit to those who have engaged with us today, we are going to give you a code to register for free. Normally we're charging for this, but as, as an acknowledgement of your being here with us today, um, there, you know, Jason will put up a code that will get you free registration for that webinar. Uh, Jason, do you wanna talk about um, Elite and how people, um, can onboard onto the Minerva Elite platform? Uh, yes, uh, the, the, the best way uh, right now to learn more about um, Minerva, the Minerva Baccalaureate at Elite Open School is to go to elitecampus.org slash Minerva. Uh, there's lots of wonderful information on there, as well as a, a contact form and a phone number where you can call us uh, and get more information or uh, submit uh, your your message and your uh, inquiry on there, and we will get, but we will have one of our uh, counselors get back to you uh, with more information and guide you through uh, the enrollment process. And let me just add to this: if for any reason you uh, decide to go to our storyteller conference and you manage to have trouble onboarding it, just email us at Elite, and we will make sure that we give you the right codes and make sure that all works. The one thing that I'm hopeful for is that, and this Ben and I share, 
is that it is the alumni network that we that we are the most proud of. I, I, I look forward to critical thinkers. I look forward to Academy Award winning filmmakers coming out of our program. I look forward to people who will tell stories that will touch hearts all over the world. Excellent. Um, well, as we as we wrap things up here, since we just have a few more minutes, and if you if you gentlemen are okay going just a little bit over, um, I would I would love to have some uh, closing thoughts uh, from you on. Um, whether students are, you know, going to pursue this extremely exciting, and the title of this uh, this seminar is the future of education, um, you know, and I think I think you've made it very clear what the future of education looks like. It it looks like hands on, practical, critical thinking, practical experience, critical thinking skills um, that students are going to be able to really use for for the rest of their lives and in their careers. Uh, whether students end up at a program like the Minerva Baccalaureate uh, at Elite or um, at uh, Minerva schools at KGI or EEI Creative Arts, or whether they, I mean, and let's be honest, the, the vast majority of students will take a more traditional, uh, you know, have a more traditional college experience. What should they be doing uh, right now as, as junior high students, as high school students to prepare for um, to prepare for college and the world and their careers and, and being citizens. Yeah, I mean, so the, the guide that I can provide or the, the best guidance I can provide is look for connections. Anytime you encounter an argument or a perspective that um, you should think like a mathematician or think like a historian, um, get rid of that construct and figure out what are the tools that are useful and that are being applied by those individuals. And then how can I apply those same tools, not to the same subject matter, but to other subject matter? Hmm. The more you do that as a practice, the broader your understanding will be and the greater expertise you'll be able to develop in each field that you choose. What I would say is, you know, for, and I know I'll get slapped upside the head for saying this is just don't settle. Don't let people tell you this is the way it is. Use your cognitive skills and your passion to drive you forward. When you're thinking about how you use every day, make every day count. Be wildly curious. Don't let anyone ever tell you you're too young to have a thought or an opinion. Just listen carefully and make sure that you firmly believe your thoughts and opinions, that they are based on something that is essentially well thought through. Be firm in the fact that it is your spirit that will infect others. It'll, mm. it'll affect your parents positively. It'll affect your community. You will be in your friends groups. I watch with awe what entertainment does. When I was growing up, we would look at really dumb TV and there was nothing to talk about. Every, it was 22 minutes with a joke every you know 13 minutes and it meant nothing. They weren't human beings, they did silly things. And yet today we are talking about AI through Westworld. We're looking at Handmaid's Tale and comparing it to what's going on in our own country. We, our young people are wildly articulate. Use your voice, harness your voice, don't settle. Wow, you came here to be inspired folks. There you go, that's, uh, that's outstanding. Thank you so much, uh, Sandy and Ben. Um, before we sign off, um, a few things I wanted to uh, bring to everyone's attention. Um, if you are interested in Minerva Schools at KGI, uh, Minerva's undergraduate program, please visit uh, minerva.kgi.edu. Uh, you can learn more, you can apply there. Um, we touched on this a little bit before, but if you are interested in the Minerva Baccalaureate at uh, Elite Open School, enrolling um, students in ninth and 10th grade this fall, uh, please, um, well, first of all, I should introduce a little bit what Elite Campus is, the, the sort of elite program that houses uh, this uh, program. This is a, Elite Campus is a combination of Elite Open School, our fully accredited 
um, fully accredited school, as well as Elite Prep, uh, which has been around for the last 30 years. Um, so we're uh, combining the top tier education of Elite Open School with the, the tutoring, test prep, extracurricular opportunities, and college uh, counseling and preparation that have made Elite the leader in college readiness for the last uh, 34 years. So it's extremely exciting. Um, we took everything that makes Elite great and we we made it into a comprehensive educational experience. And one of those tracks that you can take there is uh, the Minerva Baccalaureate. If you want to learn more about that, like I said, uh, go to elitecampus.org slash Minerva. Uh, if you're interested in uh, Elite or EEI Creative Arts, um, please check that out at eeicreativearts.com. Uh, the Minerva Baccalaureate also going to be available at EEI Creative Arts uh, starting this fall as well. Um, and as uh, Sandy mentioned earlier, we would love to have you attend the Next Generation Visual Storytellers Conference uh, coming up in just a few days, March 6 and 7. You can use the promo code MINERVA uh, to get free admission uh, to, the, uh, to the conference. Just go to ngvsc2021.com. I'll be sending out an email in the next few days uh, with all that information. Again, another, uh, another invitation as well as that promo code. Um, so that uh, pretty much does it uh, for us. Uh, thank you so much, Ben and Sandy. Uh, it's been an absolute honor, and I know that everyone in attendance has uh, benefited from your, your wisdom. Uh, so uh, thank you again for joining us. And Thanks Jason, thank you. We want to thank all the students who showed up because the goal is to meet you in person, and we look forward to that. Absolutely. Yes. With that, uh, stay healthy, stay well, everyone, and we will see you next time.